pretty rough week for me personally, but a really good week for Ukraine. Let's discuss, shall we? The US has finally approved the transfer of Patriot air defense systems to Ukraine. There has been another torture chamber found in a liberated city in Ukraine, but this one is very different. And a certain world-famous Ukrainian defender from Azov Regiment has finally gotten the surgery he needed here in the United States. Hi, my name is Yulia and you're watching the News Brief Wednesday edition, where we discuss everything that happened in and pertaining to Ukraine in the past 24 hours, as well as highlight everything important that happened in the week so far in under 20 minutes. Let's go. It's been a pretty intense week, and normally when I say that, it doesn't mean anything good, but surprisingly, this particular week is full of pretty decent news. German concern KMW has agreed to repair heavy equipment for Ukraine, and it was an intergovernmental agreement between Germany and Slovakia, and the restoration center will be 25 kilometers from the border of Ukraine. This entire week, Russians continued shelling Donetsk and Kherson regions incessantly. So many victims, so much destruction. But in lieu of that, President Zelensky and President Biden had a phone call in which Zelensky called for an international peace summit. The topic of the summit would mostly be about strengthening Ukraine's air defense and um, offense capabilities and certain very, very advanced air defense systems that we're gonna discuss a little later in this video. Maybe that's what triggered Slovakia and they finally confirmed that they're ready to transfer MiG-29 aircrafts to Ukraine. And the preparations for that are going to begin shortly. Now, that's super important because that will give us a lot of advantage in the airspace. While Ukraine has some MiG-29s, we're missing plenty of them. And getting any additional ones is going to be huge help. With the amount of times that Russia has been on fire in the past couple of weeks, which by the way, there have been three more large scale fires in there, we might not even need offensive capabilities because someone really wants their country to burn. Here is a video of a large scale 10,000 square meter fire in Russian Tatarstan at an industrial plant. Here is another fire in Klinze, Bryansk region of Russia. And this one's probably the most notable one as it's in St. Petersburg at the industrial plant Zvezda that produces diesel engines for the Navy. Take a look. Most of these fires are clearly targeting facilities that have something to do with military supply. So that leaves me wondering, are Russians finally waking up from their zombie coma? Although that might be happening, I have little reason to believe that it's because of the actual invasion of Ukraine and rather has something to do with the mobilization. Remember the 1994 Budapest Memorandum that Ukraine signed with Russia, the US and the UK? who guaranteed Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty in exchange of Ukraine giving up our nuclear arsenal that at the time was the third largest arsenal in the world? Yeah, that one. So under that memorandum, we also transferred cruise missiles to Russia, the X-55 ones. And Ukrainian intelligence has recently discovered that Russia is using those missiles as well as other ones but those missiles too, to shell Ukraine. Russia uses those missiles as bait to force Ukraine to use air defense against them. First, they launch an X-55, Ukraine responds to it, and it's like a decoy because we basically end up wasting our air defense systems. Volodymyr Zelensky gave a pretty quotable interview to David Letterman for Netflix, and the link to watch it is gonna be in the description of this video. One of my favorite quotes that came out of that interview was when David Letterman asked Zelensky if he's going to want to be president again, and Zelensky responded, I will definitely be president until our victory and then I don't even think about it. I don't think yet. I'm not ready. I just want to go to the sea when we have already won and I really want to drink beer. And honestly, that's something that I've been saying all along to anyone who's been asking whether Zelensky is going to be president for the second term. I think he's going to have no choice because the people are going to want him to be and he's essential to our Euro integration. But the man himself is probably going to want to retire, turn off his phone and never have to speak publicly again. After the interview has aired, Zelensky posted a speech of his own in which he suggested that Russia withdraw its troops from Ukraine on Christmas Day, therefore confirming their readiness 
readiness for negotiations. And he almost immediately received a response from Vladimir Putin's press secretary Peskov, who said, ain't gonna happen. And I quote, The Ukrainian side needs to accept the realities that have developed all over this time. Without taking into account these new realities, any progress is impossible. I wonder if he thinks about the realities of Russia being the pariah of the world, but I don't think that's what he's referring to. I think he's still living in the delusional fantasies where Russia has any influence and Ukraine is the bad guy. Well, in the meanwhile, to help move Russia out of Ukraine, even if they don't want to, British Secretary Ben Wallace has declared that he is not opposed to sending Ukraine longer range weapons. The G7 sort of echoed his statement saying that they stand by Ukraine and will continue standing by Ukraine against Russian aggression, that Russia will eventually have to pay reparations and rebuild Ukraine, that Putin and everybody involved is going to have to be punished, and that sanctions will continue growing. And that's very very good news because Ukraine's Foreign Secretary Dmitry Kuleba thinks that Russia is preparing for a major offensive in the beginning of 2023. Russia still hopes they will be able to move deeper into Ukraine and it's evidenced by a couple of things. Mobilization, conscription and transfer of equipment. Kuleba says, I'm not saying that this will definitely happen. I strongly believe that they will not succeed. And given that if that does happen, Ukraine is going to need much more weapons than we are receiving right now, Pentagon spokesman Patrick Ryder came out and said that there has been no evidence of mishandling or misappropriation of weapons in Ukraine. And according to him, none of them have fallen into wrong hands like a lot of people online like to speculate. So let me quote you the man himself. Himself. As of now, we do not have any reliable information that would indicate whether there have been cases of diversion of aid to Ukraine for illegal purposes. And perhaps the biggest news of the week is that all EU countries have unanimously agreed to grant Ukraine 18 billion euros worth of aid for 2023. As we might know, previously the aid package was being blocked by Hungary, who did not agree with the decision providing very bogus claims. But Viktor Orban was convinced, uh, mostly because, you know, he blackmailed EU by not supporting that decision into unfreezing the budget for Hungary that was cut because of Hungarian fascist tendencies and in compliance with the overall EU rule of law. But, you know, at the end of the day, Ukraine is getting aid, and Viktor Orban is getting what he wanted. Let's move on to the past 24 hours. Ukraine's NSDC secretary, Alexei Danilov, was hinting at nothing other than our next topic with this fantastic tweet. Now, you might think, what does a Mel Gibson movie have to do with anything connected to Ukraine? Well, it's title. Patriot are some of the most advanced air defense systems in the world, and Ukraine has been asking for them forever now and the United States has finally agreed to transfer those to Ukraine. The question is, why now? Well, first of all, last week, the United States said that they're not that scared of Russia's escalation anymore, and it's going to give Ukraine considerable advantage in the air. Well, Ukraine's civilian infrastructure in the energy sector has been ruined to such an extent by Russian shelling that no one can come up with any more excuses to withhold these systems any longer. And to be fair, thank God, because this winter is going to be brutal for almost every single Ukrainian. And to prove to you just how badly Ukraine needs modern air defense systems, I will tell you the story about Kherson. Russians attacked the center of the city with multiple rocket launchers. This morning, Russian forces attacked the center of the city with multiple rocket launchers. The shells hit the building of the city military administration and ruined two floors. Here's the video of the moment right after the hit. Preliminarily, there were no casualties reported, but later it came out that an eight-year-old boy was killed in a mind blast trauma. The Russian world, everybody. The Russian world. The capital of Ukraine, Kyiv, was also really lucky today to have garnered some attention from the Russian forces. It was attacked with 13 kamikaze drones. And while all 13 of them were taken down by Ukraine's growing in quality air defense system, some of the fragments from the downed drones have landed onto buildings and damaged them. Thankfully, according to preliminary information, there were no casualties, but Mayor of Kyiv Vitaly Klitschko clarified that two administrative buildings in Chevchenkivsky district of Kyiv were severely damaged. 
Here is a quote from Kyiv military administration on the matter. Kyiv suffered two waves of attacks by enemy drones. Debris from the downed UAVs hit one administrative building and four more residential buildings were slightly damaged. Shevchenkovsky district of the capital. People were not injured. And thankfully, due to the work of our air defense system, no energy infrastructure was hit today. However, the situation remains incredibly difficult from the previous shelling. And the previously discussed Patriot air defense systems are not the only good news in that sector. France and Italy have agreed to transfer Mamba air defense systems to Ukraine as well. Why is it so important? I'm gonna read you the characteristics of them. SAMP-T, or MAMBA, anti-aircraft missile system is manufactured by the French-Italian company Eurosam. Its key components are the Aster-30 missile and the Arabal multifunctional radar. The range of target detection is up to 80 kilometers. The SAM has a minimum reaction time and a high rate of fire. Eight missiles can be launched in 10 seconds. And while that's all great and jolly and seems like Ukraine might have just hit a Christmas gift jackpot, not all news are so pleasant. So let's move on to the heart-wrenching stuff. Human Rights Commissioner of Ukraine, Dmytro Lubinets, said that torture chambers for children were discovered in the deoccupied territories. If that statement alone is not horrifying for you, listen to this account from our ombudsman. He said that in one of those chambers, Russians kept a boy for 90 days days. The boy said he was tortured. They cut him with a knife, heated metal, and burned a part of his body. Several times they took him to the execution and shot him over the head. I frankly don't even know what to say, except to continue with the next story. In Kherson, in one of the torture chambers, there was a separate cell where children were kept as well. It was recorded that children were given water every other day, almost no food. They used psychological pressure on children. They used psychological pressure on children. They told them that their parents had abandoned them, that they would not return. What did the children do to them? What was the point of this? What was the point? Right after that news broke out, the New York Times said that the occupying Melitopol and Zaporizhia region might be the next important target in the liberation of Ukrainian South. Right after that news broke out, which connected or not, I don't know, the New York Times said that liberation of Melitopol, Zaporizhia region, is going to be the next important step in liberation of the Ukrainian South. The publication notes that Melitopol is an important hub and regaining control of that particular city is not only going to open the road for the armed forces of Ukraine to liberate the entirety of Zaporizhia region, but also the rest of neighboring Kherson. And as you might have gathered from everything I said before, Kherson has suffered a lot of torture and that's where most of the heinous crimes have been discovered so far. But that's because we still haven't been able to take back Mariupol. I can assure you that is going to be much, much, much worse. The New York Times goes on to say that liberating Melitopol may even open the way to pushing the Russian troops back to Crimea, and then hopefully eventually out of there too. Speaking of the occupied territories and Russian wet dreams over them, the pseudo-head of the so-called Donetsk People's Republic, Denis Pushilin, continues dreaming of seizing Chernihiv and Odessa. And Vyacheslav Chaus, head of the Chernihiv State Administration, had a brilliant response to that. Some Pushilin said about joining Chernihiv to Russia, terrorists did not study well at school and do not know where the territory of Chernihiv principally ended in the north. And history is cyclical. So agree to the 1991 borders while you still have the opportunity. It is coming up faster than you think. And here is what's happening worldwide. Do you remember the Azovstal defender Mikhail Dianov? If you don't, here are some pictures to refresh your memory. Now that you know who I'm talking about, let me remind you that he received a bullet wound in his shoulder and his arm was severely damaged. While he figured out some makeshift solution for that during his days in Azovstal, the inadequate medical attention, or rather lack of thereof, has left his arm severely deformed and practically not functional. His bones not only didn't grow back properly, he was also missing a part of the bone. So he just successfully underwent surgery on his shoulder in the United States and all of the costs were covered by his favorite football team, FC Shakhtar, a Ukrainian team from Donetsk. Now he's all smiles in recovery. Speaking of former POWs, 
another exchange has just taken place. 64 servicemen of the armed forces of Ukraine have been returned home who fought in the Donetsk and Luhansk sectors. These are officers, privates, and sergeants. And while we are on the topic of the brave, let's mention the not so brave and so terroristic. Britain is training the Ukrainian judges to conduct trials on war crimes of Russian military in Ukraine. Attorney General Victoria Prentice said that the program is going to ensure unprecedented large-scale prosecution of war crimes even while the war is ongoing. And while we're talking about war crimes, the Czech and the United States Senate has recognized Holodomor as the genocide against the Ukrainian people. Which is huge. I wish they recognized it as a Russian genocide against the Ukrainian people, but since it was the Soviet Union, I doubt we'll ever get that clarification. And Polish Sejm has finally recognized Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. Let me remind you that earlier there was a party that blocked this decision, but at the end of the day, Russia got the recognition it truly deserves. And despite that, on the forefront of everything that happened over the past nine months, China has made a decision to deepen its relationship with Russia, even though before that, it was debating it. China's intentions include to import more Russian oil, agricultural products, and gas. Oh, and uh, strengthen the energy partnerships in the Arctic. No big deal. And of course, there would not be a news briefing without a healthy dose of Russian madness. A Russian TV channel interviewed a man who returned from Ukrainian captivity on the horrors, absolute horrors, he has endured while there. Problem here is that the man turned out to be potentially the only honest Russian and said that they were fed three times a day, read out their rights in full, and the Geneva Convention was properly followed. He summarized that overall, they were treated very well. Now, take a look for yourself. Now on this humorous note, you can't make this up. That's all I have for you for today. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it informative, please don't forget to give it a like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and sign up for all of the notifications so you know when the next one comes out. And as always, check your news sources and don't fall for propaganda. And I will see you on Sunday.